And the first talk of this session will be given by uh, Professor Giulielmo Tamburini from the University of Naples. Um, he is a professor in philosophy of science and technology, and his talk is about artificial intelligence and ethics. Please go ahead and share your slides. Giuliano. Okay, can you see my slides? Yes. Okay, very well. Thank you so much for this invitation. And uh, uh, I try to, to put together what is my work uh, um, in the ethics of artificial intelligence together with uh, uh, the buzzwords of this, um, of this meeting and namely especially the global citizenship. So in which way uh, this work on the ethics is touching upon uh, uh, global issues, and uh, that's basically the, uh, the idea that I'm going to uh, somehow expound here, and uh, also, you know, its uh, uh, implications from the point of view of teaching and other, and other uh, things that may be interesting for the Aurora project. So the summary of my talk is essentially this. First of all, I will say something about uh, the distinction between uh, global and local issues in uh, AI ethics. Uh, and then I will make basically two examples. Uh, one based on the fact that AI is becoming so pervasive uh, that even the climate crisis, uh, um, it impinges, it uh, affects even the climate crisis problem. And so what is to be done in that respect? And then another example, which uh, marks, I believe, an ascent from uh, uh, the local to the global in AI ethics, uh, it has to do with the current AI arms race, uh, which uh, is raising uh, increasingly pro more problems that have to be tackled at present uh, from both a technological and normative point of view uh, concerning worldwide peace. Okay. So let me start essentially from, from this distinction. Uh, I will make a, a very uh, rough and ready distinction between local and global in this domain. Um, of course, there is global ethics, uh, uh, which has to do with many, many different issues, but I will keep it very simple and say that uh, uh, by global, I mean uh, a global, uh, ethical issue, I mean something that affects the good, the obligations of all human beings at the same time, uh, independent of what is their role, their position, function, origin, form of government, okay? Local, on the contrary, uh, has to do with uh, um, specific groups of people which are at each given time affected depending on the basis of certain properties which helps to single them out, like their position, function, origin, so on and so forth. So far, uh, I believe, it's my feeling, that AI ethics has been mostly concerned with local AI ethical issues. But I believe, especially in view of the pervasiveness of AI systems and technologies, which are affecting more and more every corner of our life, global AI ethical issues are now emerging and becoming more and more important. So let me first try to, to say why I feel that uh, AI has been concerned with local ethical issues mostly. Let's look at the, uh, the EU regulation proposal of April, of last April. And when uh, you look at my attempted distinction, uh, you see that education, vocational training, employment, uh, uh, workers' management, uh, uh, even migration, asylum, and so on, um, are considered high-risk AI domains, but these essentially are, according to my distinction, local. So is there anything which is, goes beyond the local ethical issues? Yes, I believe that there are at least three, but possibly more. So one is the climate crisis, because every citizen of the world must be concerned with something that may affect the life of the of Homo sapiens and many other species. 
and the, and the, and the destiny of, 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 of this species. The other thing is peace, but, but not only peace in local and regional domains, but worldwide, which we know from the uh, world wars, uh, how uh, this can be threatened. And the third thing is pandemics, of course, from, from the pan, from the worldwide epidemics. Uh, certainly, uh, there were high hopes that uh, AI would play uh, important roles in, uh, in the pandemics, but has not been so for various reasons. That's a knowledge in general. Look at the, at the, at the, at the citation here. There are some attempted explanations. Uh, there were not sufficient data to train AI algorithms. But maybe also the problem is the data, the world changes, so the data are not stable. Uh, and so uh, training is not reliable. But in any event, I think that the first two climate crises and worldwide peace and stability are areas of global ethical issues that AI is becoming more and more important. So let's look first at this uh, AI. And uh, there, have, there has been a, a surge of, of studies about uh, um, AI as a source of greenhouse gases, gas emissions. Uh, for example, the, the big models uh, for like the GPT-2 and 3 models for natural language processing with such impressive results uh, were claimed to produce for their training only as much uh, greenhouse gases as five cars in their complete life cycle. Uh, maybe some, some people have contested this, this, uh, uh, this evaluation, this assessment, uh, uh, saying that it was too pessimistic, but in any event, uh, concluding that AI training is responsible for 10% only of electricity consumption. So you have to look at AI, in a broader context uh, on, the, on the algorithm that is used, so it's, uh, it's computer program, the processors that are used to run it, to run the, the program, the data centers efficiency and energy source mix. Now let's look at a very um, optimistic, so to speak, uh, uh, outlook, uh, supposing that, uh, uh, that, uh, that the Paris Agreement uh, um, the, 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 Paris agreement, uh, the Paris Agreement is respected, uh, then the share uh, here in, in, in yellow uh, of the uh, ICT, the bigger picture of the ICT, not only AI, um, uh, will remain stable, but then uh, it proportionally will be much, much more important than today in terms of greenhouse emissions. So there is something to be done. And there is a lot to be done in terms of technological response, ethical, analytical response, and educational response. For example, an ethically motivated technological and normative agenda clearly requires to develop uh, metrics uh, for, uh, for reliable estimates, for uh, uh, developing AI models which have uh, uh, lower carbon emission profiles, identifying the rebound effects that due to the, uh, to the pervasive character of AI and uh, even cheaper, more and more, more, and, uh, more, and more cheap uh, AI models. And then also there is properly ethical and normative work on decision-making models uh, for uh, the data. The, the data hunger systems uh, need, uh, um, need data centers for data collection, processing, preservation, discarding, and also for equitable access by research business organizations. So I think there is a plenty of work to be done in this area. Let's look at the AI arms race as the second example. Uh, we have here definitely what I would like to call an ascent from the local to the global, okay? Uh, why so? Let's, uh, I started from work on autonomous weapon systems, which at the beginning were very local uh, systems, which uh, uh, were capable of diving on cert certain military targets, uh, or uh, the very famous here portrayed uh, Iron Dome uh, system, which intercepts rockets coming in Israel, coming from the Gaza Strip or the system experimental of the future, um, 
which are uh, these uh, mm, uh, swarms of, uh, uh, of uh, autonomous drones. Uh, more generally, the idea of autonomous, uh, of, uh, autonomous weapon system is that, a, is that of a system which can select and attack the target without requiring any intervention after activation uh, by human operators, military operators. Uh, so it is clear that uh, AI raises lots of uh, technological problems that have uh, a, uh, an ethical side. For example, let's look at this adversarial testing of uh, a learning AI system which was trained to recognize, among other things, school buses and uh, ostriches. Well, uh, on the left-hand side, you see a school bus, which was properly classified in this image as a school bus. Then you have a perturbation, which is magnified to make it visible to us. You get uh, the perturbed image on the right-hand side, and then the system classifies it as an ostrich. Well, that's very surprising because we are robust in that, in that way. And so a, there are many here that are differences and uh, um, about, the, 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 about the classification process and its sources. And of course, we have surprising mistakes. Uh, this gives rise to the whole local ethical and legal issues about autonomous weapon systems, which has been uh, well underway since uh, at least 10 years ago. Uh, viola violations of, of, the, of the laws of war, uh, and so the and so the possibility of uh, uh, of, uh, of of taking a school bus for an ostrich means the possibility of eating innocent people. Uh, violations of all other things in this list. What is important from the viewpoint of uh, um, of global issues? I think the thing that I that I wrote in in red is the idea uh, that uh, uh, the more and more you introduce autonomous weapon systems in the battlefield, uh, you uh, will necessarily go towards an increased pace of war, uh, which goes possible beyond the human reaction time. Uh, and so in a certain sense, the con human control on the, this uh, uh, so great and important uh, thing which is a, a human phenomenon, which is war, may be lost. And that's uh, very great. But uh, how does that uh, ascend to, uh, uh, well, I, I, I skip this. This is, a, this, is a, this is in a certain way by, well, I will just say a, one word. Uh, um, as you see, this ethical analysis, of course, I cannot delve into this, but uh, 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 raises lots of technological and normative problems. Technological in the way of how to ensure a proper partnership between humans and machines so that meaningful human control over the release of force in war is preserved on the one end. And normative work, uh, whether all or some uh, autonomous weapon systems have to be prohibited on ethical and legal grounds. And uh, I just mentioned here uh, the, uh, the groundbreaking uh, uh, position which uh, the International Committee for the Red Cross uh, took uh, a few months ago, uh, which called for an extended prohibition of many types of autonomous weapon systems and a strong regulation of others. But how does this ascend? And then I'm coming to the, to the, the, the close of my talk, uh, to a global issue concerning, as I said, all citizens at the same time of, the, of our world. Well, because uh, uh, the uh, networking into ICT systems and the pervasiveness of AI uh, uh, arms make that are making that possible. So, we start from the autonomous weapon systems, but we know that AI is playing and will play increasingly more an important role in command control and communication systems on over the battlefield. And also we know that uh, uh, there are uh, also the AI driven attacks, uh, security, we heard about security before, uh, in the cyber domain, which, which will be automated 
and will go uh, by means of learning AI systems, increasingly so, and uh, uh, will lead uh, certainly to also to attacks which go beyond meaningful human control. And uh, uh, since also the nuclear command control and communications is, uh, is largely uh, based on uh, information ICT systems, then uh, clearly we have uh, for worldwide peace uh, and uh, a, a, an existential threat. So what is my take home points? So basically is that global ethical issues as I uh, sort of uh, distinguish them from local are becoming more and more pervasive in AI ethics. Uh, this is because of, uh, of widespread use of uh, uh, AI systems. I gave two significant examples, but there are possibly more, and the pandemic possibly will be another example of the, of the double-edged nature, positive and negative, maybe, of AI systems in, uh, to tackle or, uh, or to raise uh, uh, global ethical issues. And there is a lot to be done about this uh, connected to global citizenship. And this is, uh, has to do with technological normative analysis, but also education and the, the, the development uh, and the agreement on uh, international policies that are badly needed also in this domain. I'll finish just with uh, some uh, uh, references if some, somebody is interested in what uh, more detailed work in this area. Yes, we will share Thank the slides. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, floor is open to questions. May I ask a question then? You. Um, in terms of AI and ethics, uh, you mentioned the European Commission uh, initiative. So could you comment on uh, whether you think the European Commission in its policy is uh, moving in the right direction? Okay. But they have a, uh, what they call a risk-based approach and categories of risk, but what are your comments on that? No, I, I think I think that the, the, the risk-based approach is an interesting. It may be expanded uh, uh, considering other dimensions, uh, which have to do also with, uh, uh, for example, uh, the, the novelty or uh, literacy or pervasiveness of systems. What I find really missing in a certain sense is exactly uh, the idea of tackling uh, global ethical issues. On the one hand, because the European uh, Commission um, does not, uh, in its, uh, uh, especially in its research programs, or supported research programs, uh, does not address military concerns, which were the one part of my, of my talk, and that's bad, for example, where, where are the, the, the autonomous weapon systems and other uh, AI systems for the military high risk or not. This is completely absent from the, from the, the European Commission report to the proposal for a regulation. Um, and not only that, I think that uh, also in the, uh, in the several white papers and documents, uh, uh, the positive uh, use of AI for mitigating the climate crisis or its negative impact uh, is only uh, in passing uh, mentioned. Uh, and uh, uh, hopefully there will be a more systematic approach, which is, this, is, uh, uh, this is more in uh, uh, the European uh, Commission uh, um, intentions, of course, uh, given uh, the Green Deal idea and uh, its uh, uh, current attempts to implementation. Uh, and so they should think more about uh, uh, AI and more generally about ICT from that perspective. Thank you. Um, Pietro has a question, if I'm correct. Th uh, thank, thank you, Yelmo. Uh, I have just a question. Did you include also the cryptocurrency footprint uh, inside the AI concept? I mean, uh, 
the, the, pro uh, the production of value uh, through this uh, automatic system of uh, production, or is something that is not assessed any, anyway? Okay, uh, no, I did not include it uh, because there is not a special AI rule there. Uh, the, the Bitcoin and the other algorithms are extremely uh, energy consuming, uh, possibly more than the current uh, AI uh, total, not global, otherwise I make a, a, introduce a confusion. Uh, a total uh, carbon footprint, uh, of course, uh, uh, AI uh, must be recognized as a, a special source within, within a broader uh, context. Uh, so that, that, that definitely is. Uh, another thing I certainly have not been exhaustive in, in terms of the examples I made, but the idea of global, oh, oh there is, it's, it's it's noon here. Uh, do you hear the bells? No, no, no? yes. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> oh, and um, so the uh, there are possibly more global issues that, that are maybe interesting for the Aurora project to be included 